Welcome to another episode of Unbox Live. I'm your host, Rob Gagne, with Nate Beck. We are here in the studio. And really what we want to explore is the top 25 list that Cigar Aficionado and a bunch of other companies are going to be putting out. And there's two ways you can go about this, because there's the conspiracy theory way, there's the I just like these cigars and I don't really care. There's Half Wheel does it where it has to come out in that year. There's so many different ways. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk a little bit about it. We're going to entertain some conspiracy theories. Sure. And then we're going to go from there. So hopefully, if you have any questions about top 25 lists, you can plug them in in the comments. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what you're smoking, if you're smoking anything. Right now, I started off with the Patina. Uh, Connecticut. It's absolutely amazing. It ended up on your top 10 list. It did. It's, it would have been on mine if you didn't yes. put it on there. So uh, I'm smoking the same cigar. It's this phenomenal. was actually really fun to do with you because we have very similar palettes, uh-huh. but then there's some areas where we defer, but everything you have in yours, I would totally smoke. Yep. And I think there is a long list of cigars on your list that I haven't smoked yet that I want to smoke. Cause uh, I know we have similar palettes. Perfect. So so this is fun to do with your friends. Just see what you've like if you create a top five or top 10, see what you smoke this year, compare with your friends, and then see if it hits the top 25 list of any of these publications, anything that you follow. So shout out to um, Cigars Daily. He has a really good video where he breaks down the types of publications and what and how they rate. So like Cigar Aficionado samples blindly and Cigar Journal as well. They sample over like 600 cigars blindly, rate those cigars. That's where we get the 90s, 91s, 93s, 94s, 95s. Yep. And then those end up somehow getting on a list. Now, that Cigar Aficionado, I believe, is a panel list, mm-hmm. whereas you could take another publication and they might do a, a, a consumer list like a choice list of like vote for these top cigars and then that's what ends up on the list so if you're interested in seeing what other people like out there the majority of people the average that's the type of list you want to go to you don't want to go to cigar aficionado because that's a panel but the panel technically has smoked a ton of cigars yep and you just have to understand that it's coming from a panel now could everyone out there says well those are bought because you know they're advertising in that right. publication and they and they get on that list because of that. Cigars Daily said that he's had reps tell him or companies tell him, hey, you should really stock up on this cigar. It's gonna be, it's gonna be on the top, you know, 10. And it never is. And it's happened more than once. Wow. And I believe him because he's in the industry and he's buying these cigars, and you know, of course. If 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 you're a retailer, you want to have that cigar of the year in stock as much right. as possible because it's gonna go out right real quick. Yep. So it's never happened. So therefore, to me, the panel is upheld by this. I don't know how they get the 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 top 25 list together. I'm assuming they're pulling like anything rated a 90 or 91 or over. At at the end of all of their cigar reviews, there's a list in in the in the magazine of like the top, you know. Anything that rated over a 90, basically. Yep. And you could look at that list and decide, you know, are any of these going to end up? That would be kind of fun to look back to, uh, to see what ends up on the top 25 or if any of the, like, you know, anything below 90 still ends up on there. Well, and I remember what's well, probably been 10 years ago now, or maybe more that Casa Magna, like a, I think at retail was like a five or sub $5 cigar. And that was the cigar of the year. See? Yeah. So I, mean, I don't know. I, I can understand some of the conspiracy theories or the the pay to play kind of uh, ideology for cigar aficionados uh, top twenty five list, but then there are cigars like that, right? That you think where did that come from? Well, and it's a blind tasting. Here's the other thing, you know. Okay, so let's just let's take this in the court of law. Let's say uh, you know we're we're cigar aficionado, and the prosecutor has to say that we're, we're guilty. We're going to prove reasonable not doubt right now. One, there's cigars that end up on the top 25 list that never place a single ad or give Cigar Aficionado any money. Absolutely. So reasonable doubt, number one. Second reasonable doubt is, 
essentially what Nate's talking about is there there's cigars on there that aren't super high end cigars. They, this list is not a list compiled of cigars that are only ten dollars and above. Yep. The that may not be a good reasonable doubt, but I just mm -hmm. feel like it's mm -hmm. it's not just a premium 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 list. It's a it's a list of again a lot of different samplings. Yep. And I think that's where I get the most out of it. I think the the bias that I would see if I were cigar aficionado is I have to put out a list that's going to be sufficient enough to handle the market. So again, Nate and I's list that we're going to actually share with you is a lot of boutique cigars, which yeah. we don't see on there. And I think that's where it falls is like, if you take the majority of what's out on the market, Cigar Aficionado is trying to say, and, and any good publication would do this, you can get your hands on at least 50% of these cigars in a regular premium cigar shop. If we go super boutique, just because of volume, they just can't do that. So there are awesome, awesome cigars, but there, there is something to be said about whether or not you can readily get that cigar because I've had amazing, great limited edition cigars or Kellner Boutique uh, Factory. They don't make a ton of cigars when somebody puts out a cigar. Right. And they're phenomenal. But if I'm cigar aficionado, I have to look at that and go, okay, I'm going to put that on my list and only a thousand people are going to get affected by it. Whereas there's millions of people that read that subscription. So we want to put out cigars that millions of people can get their hands on. Yep. And there have been cigar companies that have had real difficulty after making, you know, top five even where they were, it's unexpected and they don't have the production or the cigars to keep up with the demand. And it's a real challenge. Absolutely. So I think that more than buying places, I think that's the lens that I see cigar fishing out of looking at their top 25 through. How can people get their hands on this? And is it in good enough production that it's going to be worthwhile to highlight? I don't know. You know, you go to half wheel and, you know, it has to be released that year, has to score a 90, I believe, or higher or an 89 or mark? something. Yeah, there's yeah. like a benchmark or a 91 or higher. So it's it's cool to see all these different lists, make your own. Uh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So let's get into it. Let's go with Nate's list or whatever we have first. Matt, Matt has created a Google uh, slide for us to go through all these because God knows we weren't able to buy all these. Although you got to decent amount, Nate. So right. nice job. Is there a way, Matt, that we can start with slide number two? Because I think Rob and I are going to hold off. We have unbanded our, that. leave it right there. We've unbanded our favorite cigar of the year each, right, Rob? Yeah. And we are going to smoke this, light it, and then reveal what our favorite cigar of the year was. Yes. So I'm going to start with number two. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have one that I picked up, but my Second favorite cigar of the year, and this is one I go back to time and time again, the Placencia Alma del Campo. It's floral, uh, great spice notes, and I particularly like the Toro size, which I believe is second from the right there on your screen. One of my absolute favorite cigars, always consistent. Great company. Love that cigar. Number two, what do I have for number two? Or number three, I should say. I think is the so Casa is this Cuba. Two from the bottom, or like, are you no, at number at ten? Top. I'm no, I'm starting at the first number one. There two. was number two. This is now number three. So Ooh, this is okay. the Casa Cuba, double sace, made by Fuente, as you can see there. Absolutely stellar. Let's do this one here. Yeah, absolutely stellar cigar. Not a lot of people, when they see this in the humidor, are aware that this is a Fuente product. Kind of right. gets overlooked absolutely love this cigar in fact one of the one of the cooler shops in the country grand cathedral cigars the owner of that shop loves this yes. cigar, and she's a big fuente uh super fan uh and this is one of her favorite cigars love the casa cuba favorite size is the double sace what do we got next there matt next this little gem the juarez shots I don't know if you can switch here, Matt. It is a little tiny baby cigar. I think it's four by 50. And this, like just a little cocoa bomb, uh, Mexican San Andreas wrapper. Absolutely love this cigar. And I've smoked all the sizes of this cigar by Crown Heads. 
And I absolutely love this little shots. The best out of all of them. It's creamy. Can smoke at any time of day. Perfect cigar. If you smoke in your vehicle, which is amazing. About a 30 to 35 minute cigar. If you're smoking it in your car, it's perfect on your drive home. Love this little cigar. Dog walking. Yep. When we had our all Boveda company event, we bought a lot yes. of cigars. And this little Juarez was the hit of the party. Like this was the bell of the ball, if yeah. you will. Yeah, yeah. Everyone kept coming up to me saying, Nate, can I get another one of those Juarez? And I go over to the box. Oh, you guys, we smoked them all. <laughs> So we I, smoked through a lot and it's of a, cigars. We dude. did. And this box is a 50 count box of cigars and we smoked all of them. Yeah. Also a great cigar. If you have friends that don't want to smoke a big cigar, just want to enjoy the camaraderie. This is a great cigar in a size like this. Kind of like the Hemingway short story by Fuente. Perfect time. All right. Let's head to number. This would be number uh, five. The La Madrina Maduro uh, Dapper Cigars. This one was a little gem that I was not expecting to like as much as I do. Uh, absolutely fantastic flavor. Great cigar. Amazing. Cigar. Really, really, really good cigar. Love the band on this. I got a quick pull up Big Joe's comment here. So we just got done talking about the down at the bottom. Big Joe. He says, uh, you're going to make the water is hard to get now. Thanks guys. <laughs> Big Joe. I really wish we had that much influence. That you would know, right? be really great. So uh, I'll take that as a compliment, but you yes. know, I don't think we're going to make it uh, super limited for anybody for that matter. Yep. But it's a great stick. Definitely should be box worthy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the price point when, like you said, if you got somebody who doesn't smoke a lot, what, five bucks. It's cigar. not, it's not going to break you when they don't finish yep. it or, yep. you know, it's not giving them like a $10 cigar and you're like, yeah, you didn't smoke all that. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Jerk. Absolutely. Was that a wedding? Uh, Churchill late hours by Davidoff. Mm. We put the box out sooner than we were expecting to. And an hour later, there were four that had about an inch and a half burned. And we were just heartbroken. It's like we're sacrilege, like, man. Sacri but they don't know, right? They don't, they don't know. know. They, they don't, know. don't know. They're just, they're drinking. They're having a good time. They're like, oh, I'm for, done. For my wedding, I didn't even look at the ashtrays. I was like, I can't. No, nope. I can't. It's I just, too heartbreaking. It's, it's not, it's, it, you enjoy however you want to enjoy. I'm not here to tell you how to smoke a cigar. This is my day, yep. but I, I can't look at the ashtrays. I, I know. It's so too I had my buddy clear them. I think Tony <laughs> Haugen, if you're out there, he cleared a few ashtrays oh, for me because really? I was like, oh my God. And he's like, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Yep. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should we go on to the next one, Matt? Yeah. The Oliva Siri V Milano Maduro. Robusto. Classic cigar, been around for a while. A, this Milano almost ends up nearly wow. every year I, in the top 25. I'm so glad you said it because I was going to say it because I'm like, right. you and I both did our homework on, right. on what ends up on the list. And Great every cigar. single year, some Vitola of the, the Series V ends up on there. And the reason is, is there's nothing that tastes like that cigar. No, it's fantastic. I don't even know what it tastes like, but it does not taste like anything else. And it's phenomenal. Yes. So I love the Robusto size. Again, it's a shorter cigar. Can enjoy it yeah. in 45 minutes to an hour, at least at the pace that you and I smoke. Yeah. Uh, great cigar. Consistent all the time. Readily available. Nearly everywhere. Um, great cigar. What do we got? I'd be for curious to see one? if one of these Milanos ends up in this year's it has to. top 25. It's right? got to. How it's does got it got not? to. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be on there, guys. Just FYI. All right. So next we have the Crux Du Connoisseur number two. This is a re release for Crux this year, I believe. I think they released it at PCA. Mm -hmm. uh, Rebanded, really fantastic branding that Crux has for all their cigars. Just beautiful packaging. Uh, what's really cool in their boxes, they'll, there will be either five or 10 cigars that are individual, and then they'll have them in these cool boxes of five that you can get and just pick up a box of five with really great packaging. You just slide the top right off. So holiday tip, when you're buying cigars as a holiday gift, 
the reason Davidoff, the reason Crux, and a couple other companies will buy and invest in five package packaging is because it feels more supreme. It feels like you're giving somebody a box of cigars without buying 20 cigars. And with Davidoff, right. that's very difficult because they're 20, 30 bucks a stick. Yep. And so you buy a box, you're you're out like 500 bucks. With Crux, it's still like a you know, $10, $12 stick. But the nice thing about it is that you can spend less than 100 give a five pack, put it in a Bovity humidor bag, and it is a very luxurious looking and feeling. And yes, it, it, the, the, the top of the box slides off. You can hand somebody like as if you're just reaching out the box and they get to pick their own cigar out of the box. You guys, it's all a part of the experience. I just packaging matters to a certain degree. And then it just doesn't matter anymore because if it's just visually appealing, it doesn't matter. But that whole five finger box, it's just, I've done it before. I felt very, uh, like nice to give somebody something that yep. reflects well. And another thing that both Rob and I love about Crux Cigars is it's owned by one of our good friends, Jeff Hogan, one of our favorite local shops here in Minnesota, just a supremely great guy, Jeff, Casey, Tony, the whole crew, Sam down in right. Texas, the whole crew is fantastic. These guys are putting out great cigars. The Duke Connoisseur, this is the number two. Love this cigar. Placencia makes that cigar. And the, the biggest thing that they focus on is being able to smoke more uh, multiple cigars in a day. Yeah. So they don't want any palate fatigue. So if you look at like blending, you know, La Hero or the top priming is going to be the strongest. And there's great cigars out there that don't even use any La Hero. It's not required to use it. And so Jeff and the whole team over at Crux is very conscious of how the cigar comes off the palate and will you reach for another one either later today or immediately afterwards. Right. And I think that's something I always look for is could I smoke another one? If it's too harsh, I don't even want to finish the first one I started. Yeah. And another one of their cigars is a, a tie with one of the cigars in my list. Nice. Um, similar flavor profile, but we'll get to the next cigar here. The next cigar we have here is the one that Rob and I are smoking. This is the Patina Connecticut. I was smoking. I moved on. Did you move on? Yeah. Oh, I got to catch up. This is a phenomenal cigar. It's a phenomenal God. cigar. Rob and I both like the Connecticut and the Habano. Absolutely fantastic cigars. Shout out to my cigar pack who put this Connecticut in my pack. Yep, I got too. it. I've never had patina before. I smoked it. Immediately messaged Mo, the owner. It's like, dude, this is a phenomenal stick. I, I mean, even the Habano. Yes. Phenomenal. Even the Maduro. In my palate, it's good. It's not. But the real spark is this Connecticut. It has so much flavor. It has so much um, complexity for me. I absolutely love it. I, I mean, Mo has three lines a connecticut habano and a maduro yep and i don't think he needs any more now sure could he make more absolutely but man he's sticking to the if i do these three things well that should be enough to get brand recognition and i just i just think it's great i don't think you're going to see this cigar in any i mean you'll see it on some top 10 lists like cigar dojo and other guys um but i don't think it's going to make cigar aficionados mm -mm. but i think it should it should but I, I think, again, there goes and lies the theory of production. Does he have enough inventory for a cigar aficionado to say, yeah, let's put that on the list and will people be satisfied? You have to su supply your, whatever publication you are, you have to supply your audience yes. with something that they can actually get value out of. Yeah. And I think that's where the problem lies. I think these cigars, cigar aficionado would agree with us. They are phenomenal cigars. Yep. I just think for whatever reason, they're not making the list because of production and that's yep. where i stand on it so conspiracy theory busted yeah. right here on on, on bovid on box live <laughs> it's not a conspiracy there's no paid to play uh but you know maybe there is go check out the sultan's podcast they might have something different to talk about <laughs> mo shout out all right we'll go on to the next in my list i think is this one this is one that tied with me in my top 10 with the Crux Epicure. This is the 
Hoya de Nicaragua, Connecticut, Antonio. Connecticut wrapper, but it's got some strength Phenomenal. in the filler and binder. Uh, really complex cigar. It's not that classic kind of smooth, creamy, light mm -mm. Connecticut. It's actually kind of a strong cigar. It is. And it's a great cigar. And I really like it in this Toro size. This is a cigar that I buy boxes of on the regular. Absolutely love this. Smoke it any time of day. Uh, spectacular flavor. Really great, unique cigar. And it's from one of those producers that's a, you know, a bigger name producer that often gets missed when you start smoking a lot of these boutique cigars. Uh, this yep. one I smoke a lot. Hoya de Nicaragua, Connecticut, Antonio. Then I think the next one will be, I think is, yes. Ooh. So this is called The Leaf by James. Uh, I forget James' last name. Is it Brown? It's not I Brown. have no idea. I forget James' last name, but James is the owner of Black Label Trading Company and Oveja Negra Brands. Made this cigar, I believe, in collaboration with uh, Oscar Valadares. I believe. If not... It's kind of in the similar vein to those Leaf by Oscar cigars where it has that natural paper wrapper that one I individual I think this makes. is all Jim Robinson. Yeah, it's connected with Jim Robinson out of uh, I think Pittsburgh. he does all the Leaf by uh, these leaves right. with that blender. I think so. Yep. This is a great cigar. Uh, I think only comes in one size, maybe two. Uh, but if you can find this at a shop that has a good selection of boutique cigars, seek this cigar out. It's got great spice components to it. It's creamy. There's like, a first puff. It's delicious. There's a different. So I'm toying with this and maybe you guys can make some comments or leave a comment below. I want to do a video that releases some of the most unrecognized cigars in the industry that are very, uh, not very well seen, but they are phenomenal. So I'm toying with the idea if we get enough likes on this video or if we get enough comments, I'll do it. But I don't want to do it because there's cigars I like and I secretively hoard. So if I release the video and back to Big Joe, if I have enough influence, I'm going to see these cigars start to dissipate and that is going to bother me. So yes. if, uh, and you you know the one I'm talking about that is uh, part of the leaf and I brought it back after mm -hmm. I went to Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and you were like, oh, this is really good. We gave it to three or four people, and yep. every time they smoked it, they were like, this is phenomenal. Um, it is phenomenal. So if I do it, I'm going to be shooting myself in the foot because mm -hmm. everyone else is going to want to. But it's it's worth knowing because there's so many great cigars out here. And I, I empathize with you guys out there because it is expensive to buy these cigars and so if it's not big enough, do you really know if it's worth your 10 bucks? Right. And that was always my hard part. It's like, I don't know anything about this brand. Why would I pay 10 bucks for it? And uh, then I like, I smoke it. Well, and the other reason is that I feel guilty is because they give it to me for free or I have an opportunity to travel there and, and, and smoke it and try it. And then I feel guilty. Like, oh, I should tell so many more people about this because mm -hmm. it's so good and you would enjoy it so much. So I don't know. There's another one that makes some noise. There's another cigar that we won't mention that's also a huge favorite of Robin Eyes that we don't want to let get out because it's already hard enough to get. And it's a spectacular cigar, but maybe we'll talk mm. about it on that same podcast. It might be worth it. Mm hmm. All right. So, what's coming up next here, Matt? I think I've got one left. Uh, oh, we'll make it two left. So, this is historically for me. This is one of my absolute favorite oh, yes. producers. This was a cigar that got released. Another one at PCA. Got a chance to smoke it. My good friend, Rainier Lorenzo, the owner uh, of HVC, came out with a unique, larger ring gauge cigar, which is not typical of his cigars. He typically shies away from larger ring gauges. But this is the Hot Cake Grand Canyon. Hmm. Uh, and it's a 60 ring gauge hot cake and it's a wow. fantastic cigar. It smokes beautifully. Really? Yeah, it's a beautiful I've only cigar. had the smaller ring gauge ones. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, okay. it's really, really good. Uh, it's been very well reviewed. So he's getting some really, really good press from it. Uh, just a great cigar and an absolute gem. Of Isn't it being. fun to like find a cigar that, especially big, big ring gauges are things that we don't gravitate towards at all. Yep. And they feel uncomfortable as a smoke sometimes, but 
every once in a while, I find a big ring gauge cigar that actually out of that line and that Vitola is the best. Mm -hmm. And if you say that one is, I'll take your word for it. For me, it's my father's Connecticut. Oh, sure. 60 or the Gordo, the double Gordo, yep. the 60 ring gauge one. Oh, I could buy a box of those and start every morning with that. Off the charts. Yep. Yep. I love that. And I think, Matt, I got one more here in my list. Another producer, Foundation Cigars, Nick Melillo. I think I'm saying that correctly. I'm a big, big fan of the Tabernacle line. I like both the uh, standard Tabernacle. And then this is the Tabernacle Havana uh, uh, Havana Seed Connecticut number 142. I believe I got that right. In the Lancero size, this cigar is spectacular. It's got a lot of strength to it, um, a lot of complexity, but it's got this really great floral component that I absolutely love. This cigar right here. If you can get your hands on this cigar, the, the kind of the original Tabernacle has a black background on the band. This one has red. Right. It's fantastic. Yeah. I love this cigar. Is it Job? Job? Uh, yo, shout out. So appreciate that. Man, I really am glad that you got to see that video where we cut a humidor open and that was all inspired by Ed who makes uh, Waxing Moon Humidors. It was super informative for me and it solved for me the, the, the problem of understanding what the humidor's performance and capability is. Um, that led into some more testing that we did. We were, we're comparing two different products and... I bought some really cheap humidors on Amazon. They're like $32 humidors. So even less construction than what I did in cutting that open. And Bovida still performs. So, I mean, you guys, Bovida has a solution for every humidor. Go back and watch that humidor uh, video and, and just get a little education on what's going on. And to be honest, Bovida tests in these poor, poor humidors to make sure we are capable of technology that actually performs in every type of humidor. So when somebody says, oh, I got rid of my wood humidor because it just was, you know, a pain and it just never kept the humidity right. I always have to cringe a little and say, but, but we could fix that for you. We can. Like for the most part, Absolutely. I'm going to say like 90% of the time we could fix it. Yep. So reach out to our customer service team. They would love to help you. Info at bovodainc.com um, or through our social media, Bruce, who's handling the channel right now. Uh, we got solutions for you guys. Anyways, I digress. Thank you, uh, Job, for sending that comment, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. I think, Rob, we're on to your list. Mm. All right. Got to re-upload. All right, we'll get Rob's list up here. A lot of stuff on my list. Again, I debated like even before we started this, I was like, should I just try to see what's going to end up on the list of Cigar Aficionado? Again, I kind of had this theory that it's going to be nothing but um, cigars that you can actually get your hands on from the production uh, side of it. But Nate and I smoked kind of a lot of boutique stuff. After wow. I did this list, I was like, that's actually quite a bit more than I actually thought. Yep. Um, and, and mainly, I have to shout out a lot of the Cigar of the Month clubs, whether it's cigarclub.com, Pravada, um, My Cigar Pack, Luxury, Lu cigar, Luxury Club. cigar Club. I yeah. mean, these guys, I'm getting exposed to these cigars because of it. And then mm -hmm. I'm going back and buying boxes. It truly is the greatest way, in my opinion, to try cigars that I would never once have tried. And I absolutely love it. And it's been phenomenal. Are you smoking your number one now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As are you, right? Mm hmm Uh-huh. Mm, your cigar is so good. I love Illusion Fuma de... de how do you say that? D'Amour? Uh, Fume d'Amour Clementes. Okay. I haven't had that one, but cool thing. If you love Illusion, you probably know Epernay. We recently got together with Jim Nash, who is our state representative... Um, in one of the districts out here in Minnesota, and he had never smoked an Epernay, and we got to get him to smoke one, and he was like, this is phenomenal. So Dion of Illusione has a phenomenal palate, and if you like 
any cigars that he produces, it, it's no surprise. He's just amazing palate. Yeah, we were just talking about uh, his palate the other day and how he has uh, an incredible ability to be able to pick out uh, components of cigars literally on one smoke. Right. Like on one cigar, he can generally nail the blends right. on a lot of cigars. He's just really got a dialed in palate. Now, this next cigar toggles between my top one and top two. This is the Smoking Jacket by Henke. So Kellner Boutique Cigar Factory, shout out to them. Look at the blend makeup. One of those is basically in parentheses, it says uh, exclusive Kellner, uh, I think it's an HV2000 blend or tobacco, not a blend, tobacco. Yep. I love this because the Kellner family is the family that has a lot of uh, farms that gives tobacco or sells tobacco to Davidoff. I don't know all the logistics behind it, but it's cool because they have like these unique hybrid seed varietals. So anytime somebody's making something out of the Kellner Boutique Cigar Factory, I want to try it. Yeah. Absolutely want to try it. So yep. shout out to like Cabal Cigars. That's been notoriously on my top 10 list. That's what I was talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shoot, we're giving one away for free. <laughs> Dang it. It's so good. Oh, dude, it's so good. Rob, shout out to Chris from Cabal. That cigar is phenomenal. Rob may not remember this, but when I came on board this past January with Boveda, Rob presented me with a medium humidor bag lined up with 12 different cigars. And he's walking me through. He's like, ah, I don't know how old that is. Yeah, that one's great, but have no idea when I got that. This cigar, you have got to try this cigar. So I pull it out because there's, we were talking about this before we came on camera. <laughs> it's fine to save and sit on cigars for special occasions, but you know what? Sometimes Tuesday is a special occasion and I tend to go, <laughs> if I'm in the mood, I'm going to smoke it. So I smoke that cigar. Shut up and smoke it. Knocked my saving. socks off. Dude. Oh. I bought two or three boxes of those. It's incredible. Still have a box. That Robusto, that, I mean, it's so unassuming. Dude, it's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal cigar. Yeah, there's a secret behind that cigar, but we won't yeah. do that. We'll leave we'll that for that. the video. Yeah. You know, come on. Just a teaser, talking about celebratory sticks. Um, Matt, without going to the slideshow, can you advance to the next one so that we don't see that okay um because i think the next one is yeah that's my number one um so go to the next one after that cool uh now we are going to do a video it's going to be pre-recorded but it's going to drop on the 17th no not the 17th we're going to have a guest host ben is going to guest host unbox live because nate and i are going to be out and then on new year's eve the 31st we are going to do a video smoking a $500 cigar, Davidoff Oro Blanco. And on top of it, Crazy. we are going to go through all celebratory sticks. So we're going to talk about this topic of like, do you save cigars to celebrate? Do you not? Why Why would you save a cigar? Because tomorrow you may not be able to smoke it. So just smoke it. Like, uh -huh. I mean, the list goes on, but it's going to be a great episode. We're going to pre-record it. We're going to smoke through the whole thing. The reason we're pre-recording is because, you know, this show is only usually about 40 minutes. That cigar is at least an hour and a half, and mm -hmm. we want to smoke the whole thing and do it justice and give you a report back. Mm -hmm. Is it worth the 500 bucks? Is any cigar worth any amount of money if it's over 20, 30 bucks? Right. You know what I mean? Because for, for a lot of cigar smokers, 20 bucks is like, no. They're like, get out of here. You got to be kidding me. And 500 seems even more ridiculous. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. So anyways, teaser. <laughs> more teasers than anything on this show right you know so it pays to be in the live exactly so you can leave a comment all right my next cigar is this it yeah it, it both you know patina connecticut i love the habano as well i mean it's phenomenal it's I mean, fantastic enough said mo great cigar this next one is um, which one is this? Oh, so you can't, yeah, again, <laughs> sorry guys, you can't get this one in the United States. I hope Placencia changes that. Shout out anyone from Placencia watching or ends up seeing this. This cigar needs to be released to the United States market. Um, it it's is great. phenomenal. Nate, you got one handed to you from Nestor, I believe. Uh, no, it oh. was from, uh, Javier. Javier. Yep. From Placencia. Placencia. 
And you said, you got to try this. You, you went back and got me one. So I appreciate uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, Placencia for giving us more of those. They're phenomenal. So if they, you, they do give them out. If you're ever at a cigar event and Placencia is there, there you go. They do bring them. And if you come ready to buy and you buy cigars, you're more than likely going to get one of those as an event only cigar. I so ah, keep that you can mind. jump on the interwebs, uh -huh. find somebody overseas that sells it. And I'm sure they'll ship it to you. It just might take a while. So make sure they ship it with Bovra. I will admit I smoked one in the car on the way into work today and it was spectacular. Were you holding out on me? Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's got more and he's not even sharing. Son of a gun. We won't get into how many cigars Rob has in his house. <laughs> it's just a few thousand. A, a Don't few. worry about it. All right. What's the next one? Oh, the Lambert. I have this sitting in front of me. You like the Juarez little shot. I love this little guy phenomenal little stick it is very uh enough to be able to smoke in the morning have some coffee with it smoke in the afternoon smoke anytime in between cigars if you wanted phenomenal cigar teaser we actually hey we got 10 videos we got the lambert guy at pca so uh the lambert cigar company the the gentleman who started it we interviewed him at pca is a great story very cool um castagli cigar company is making that and uh just phenomenal you just put that right over here in my list yeah no smoke. get out of here yeah, we'll i'll trade you right for here. one of those uh 18 you know uh the that's a deal yeah I okay do have one more left oh all right uh -huh. yeah yeah here this is i've how been holding out on you for this is how we negotiate yeah uh -huh. he's like i'm just not gonna give anymore until i see something I saw I it want. in my humidor at home and i went i'll just save that one for a <laughs> <laughs> and get a good cigar from yes, him exactly. that's exactly the way i would play that all right now this one, Romeo and Juliet, a Reserva Toro. I mean, you can get this anywhere. I put this on my list because I smoked it for probably the first time this year. Blew my socks off. Absolutely love it. Hands down, a box-worthy cigar. Got to put it in your repertoire. Love it. And if you don't, I don't even want to hear about it. Don't even leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll delete it. <laughs> we'll just delete it. Ah, the power is that be. We won't, but. No, we won't. Maya Silva. Oh my goodness. The Flor de Silva is so complex, so unique. Again, go back to Box Press. I got to interview her on an Unbox Live. It was phenomenal. She has an amazing story. She's been around for ages, mainly playing over in the European market. And again, starting to cross the pond now yeah. and come into the United States market with her cigars. They're phenomenal. Her story is amazing. She's a gem of a lady. I highly recommend it if you haven't watched the video already. And pick up some of those cigars. Cigaryard.com, I think, has some as well as probably um, wherever that was, small batch. I think that's cigaryard.com where I got that picture from. So, yep. yep. So, yep. Next one is Flor Florinata, uh, the Habano. Again, this came in my cigar pack. It was phenomenal can't say anything more again it's a boutique cigar so i don't know like this I gotta is find this one not gonna end up on the top 25 for cigar aficionado but it is a top 25 for me or top 10 at least mm -hmm. it's phenomenal i've said this one about a million times saint louis ray originals this cigar so when blenders are blending cigars they're always talking about Aroma and the tobacco all coming together to make the cigar smoking experience. I was He's sitting right here. Yeah, I, I was sitting down with uh, a very old gentleman who smokes pipes all the time. He's since passed. Um, it's one of my best friends, uh, his wife's grandfather, and he smoked Virginia number no. seven, which is Q1, Lane Q1, if you're um, in the tobacco industry out there. Great. Uh, pipe blend, which is very standard aromatic uh, pipe blend. I lit this cigar up and I sat down on his uh, deck out at his lake home and started smoking it. And he goes, that smells amazing. So when an elderly person who's been smoking great tobacco for his entire life says that smells amazing and it also tastes amazing, I'm putting it on my list. Uh-huh. 
it's worth putting on your That's list. That's a great story, man. Yeah, it it was uh, when he said that it kind of like opened my eyes. Like, yeah, this is a great cigar. Yes, it does smell amazing. Yeah, and the blend. I mean, it hasn't changed for years and years and years and years and years. So, um, the nice thing about like a company like Altidus that's very big, they can really work hard to keep their blends consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love that. Next up. Mm. Some street tacos by Rojas. Now, I don't Rojas. know how I got this cigar, but I've had a couple. It's a great band. And it is, you and I were talking about the flavor coming out of it is yes. this unique spice that you can't really put your finger on, but it's super enjoyable and you want to have it more and more and more and more. And I almost have to remind myself not to over smoke this cigar. Right. Because if it gets too hot, it doesn't have all the flavor that I want out of it. But I get so damn excited, I, I, I tend to have to tell myself, okay, put it down. Put it down. I Let smoked my first one yesterday oh, so here good. in the office, so sitting at this exact table. Because Rob had talked about it so highly. I picked one up a couple weeks ago. And like the best way I could describe it, it's like when you smell a marinade or a spice rub. And you can't really put your finger on what that flavor is or what that aroma is, but you just know that it's got some spice and some pepperiness and some meatiness to it. It's it's fantastic. So good. Fantastic. So good. Do I have any left? Do I have one more left? No? Is that it? All right. Oh, so now, now it's number, number one. one. All right. Well, Nate, you want to go first? Sure. Well, I think I think Matt's got your presentation up here. Okay. I'll go first. That's fine. Go back. I'll do yours here first. Go three clicks to the right. There you go. It's there like it you're is. sighting in a scope. Three clicks yep. to the right. All right. Now we're on point. This is my number one cigar. Uh, Culture blend number three. We got approached by Adrian. Uh, he said, I'm going to put Boveda in it. It's uh, the story behind this. You'll have to go back and watch the video, but the short, quick cliff notes. His dad is a grower for a very good company in tobacco very prominent company. We've named the name today, but I'm going to let you go back and find out through the video what it is. He bought uh, the tobacco from them. So Adrian owned it. He could do whatever he wanted with it. So he's getting some blends made, personal blends. He'd hand them out to really special clients. And then finally they said, Adrian, you're sitting on all this tobacco still. We have to do something with it. And he said, what do you mean? Can't I just keep getting a few made here and there? And he go, no, the tobacco is going to turn. It's 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 reached its pinnacle of its life cycle. It needs to be used. It can't just keep being stored anymore. So he goes, okay, let's come up with a blend. It's called blend number three because he, out of 66 blends, number three was the one that he liked. 66, 66 blends. 66 blends, dude. Holy smokes. Blew my mind that he, wow. that, and, and he really was pushing them to really like see what he could do with the tobacco. Mm -hmm. Very cool story. Very limited. Not a lot of people have this. It could be out of stock. I'm surprised it still is in stock even because it was very limited. Sure. The whole back of the package tells you every single region that the tobacco came from, the relative humidity that it was stored at, everything. Uh, unbelievable. It's a phenomenal cigar, very complex. Number one for me this last few years. Yeah. And Matt, so you don't have to go back and uh, find that presentation I don't know if we can see this here. My number one cigar of the year, if you can see this, the Fiat Lux by Ace Prime Cigars. Luciano Mayrelles, or Mayrelles, I believe if I'm saying that correctly, is the master blender, one of the owners of Ace Prime Cigars. This is the Insights size, so it's kind of, it's a Corona size. Love it absolutely blown away by this cigar. I smoked this cigar for the first time uh, when we were at PCA opening night. They had a mixer for all the vendors, uh, uh, cocktails, little bit, little bites, and everybody got a small Boveda one-year humidor bag with, I think, four or five cigars in it. I saw the cigars, looked at it, and went, ah, I'll get to these later. Didn't really think much of it. Tucked it away in a humidor bag when I got back from Las Vegas. And one day I went, you know what? I think I'm going to try this cigar today and absolutely knocked my socks off. One of my favorite things about this cigar. 
And I got to actually talk with Luciano on a visit to Dallas. He happened to be visiting shops, uh, doing promotional events the same time I was in Dallas visiting accounts. Lucky. I was super lucky and got to chat with him for three or four hours. And we were talking about flavors that are really unique in both cigars and food and beverages. And I'm a big fan of cigars that have salinity, some acidity, and sometimes even a little bitterness because yeah. it helps to bring out all these other flavors that you wouldn't normally get. And so he handed me another one of these Fiat Luxes. And the tobacco that's in this has a really great acidity to it. And what happens is much like when you're about to eat a meal, your mm. mouth starts to produce more saliva. You get more of that acidity because you're getting ready to like enjoy food. The same thing happens when you have acidity in cigars. And it just opens up your palate because your taste buds are able to taste so much more. And if you smoke this Fiat Lux next to another cigar that you love and go back and forth, it opens up other flavors in that other cigar that wouldn't be there originally. It's fantastic. And to piggyback on our Halloween episode where we were blown away that the sweet tarts and the tart sour candy really had a much more dramatic impact on our cigars. It's the same principle with the acidity in this cigar. It just really opens everything up. We talked all about that when we were pairing Halloween candy with cigars, that whole story, that whole reason, even this cigar. Now that I'm, uh, just at right before you spoke, I was like, wow, I'm really getting kind of like that sweet tart uh -huh. tartiness on the tip of my tongue. Yes. And I absolutely love it. Pull up Mike's comment. The last one. I mean, obviously he's got another great comment. The Romeo Juliet cigars are great, but this comment, Mike, Rob, are you going to do a 2021 cigar Christmas gift list for us? Consider this it, Mike. We are. This is the list of cigars that I would put on my Christmas mm -hmm. list. Now, if you want to go back and see our gift guide, for um, gift giving and like different like accessories that we think are staples that you have to have and different gift boxes that we think are valuable. Go back and watch last week's or two weeks ago, that video, Mike, that will help you get some gift ideas, but otherwise take this list. Be, and that's why we did a lot of screenshotting is so that you guys could see the cigars, see what we liked, go out there, buy them from your um, local retailers or buy them from your favorite online shop. What did Justin say? Justin says, it's not my fave, but the Milanio is always good, always available, no matter how many lists it makes. And it's at a great price. Amen. Absolutely. Agree wholeheartedly. Absolutely. Man, the cigar is great. Yeah. You know, phenomenal. Okay. So if you guys are out there uh, trying to put together lists, look at the comments here people are dropping some great cigars we just dropped 20 on you hopefully you enjoy them and can find them and if you really want to see that video about rare rare cigars that are extremely good but limited in production drop a comment let me know and as always subscribe to the channel so we know who's out there and liking it ring the bell get notified we do this every other friday and the fridays in between we drop a box press where you guys can meet the cigar makers you can see their story and you can hear everything they have to offer about their brand themselves. And just personally, the stories are just mm -hmm. phenomenal. These are regular people like you and I that decided to roll some cigars and sell them on the market. And as with almost every instance in life, a great story always makes everything better. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in as always. We, we thank you for your time today and have a great weekend and uh, keep keep an eye out. We're going to be dropping some really cool videos coming up. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Cheers.